don't I will record on uh, on zoom because it's uh, more uh, 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 mm, mm, it's better so here is f inverse of a here's f inverse of B with two circles how does how does how do these two circles arise from one circle you see the level sets I drawn uh, I drew here are like up to say mm, uh, homotopy but there is another uh, a more precise picture so let me draw the, um, a more precise picture here is a and now this if you cut it with this and go looking at the slices higher and higher you can see that this starts looking like this uh, so i checked and it looks like there's no sound on twitch too but i can record it with obs on, on my computer i'm i'm recording now on zoom okay thank you okay so uh, this you see if you have a like a tire mm, you cut it by slices then it is first it is a circle but then it is like more and more pin mm, squeezed in here until it becomes a single a singular part this is a singular level set c and then these two circles become like like this so what happens is that we can in here single out like two segments and here maybe two greenish segments and then the the part that is outside of the blue region and the green region here is preserved it's if you if you are here and your flow of the gradient vector field doesn't hit c then you are then you don't know about the click up point you just go straight uh, you just go straight until you reach the level set b the point is whether when you the problem is when you hit the critical point if you are if you are close to hitting a critical point then something happens this part is repl gets replaced by that part okay so this is like a situation either you come close to the neighborhood uh, come close to a critical point or you don't come close if you don't come close you ignore it because you just go to level set b and you stay in the same position but if you come close then some topology changes happen and uh, this uh, topology this change of topology is called uh, uh, surgery or handle attachment depending on whether you look at the level set or the level set below topological surgery mm -hmm. not uh, like uh, medical surgery which is um, far less uh, nice <clears throat> okay so what is the um, how can we describe it well let's first come back to Morse lemma so from now on p is a critical point p is a critical point so we here here is our p and we like set up sanity notation like f inverse of a b contains a single critical point p well, and f of p is equal to c belonging to a b so if c by writing this i mean that c is not a or nor need uh, nor b and now i do this i choose now it's more slammer so more lemma, what that what does it tell us? Such that f of x one 
xn is equal to minus x1 square minus xk square plus xk plus 1 square, so k is the index, plus xn square plus f of p. That's what we get, okay? So this is, uh, um, this is more slemma applied to the critical point p. So you see, this is like a standard uh, procedure, like a single digression before I proceed. It's a standard uh, procedure like in singularity theory or in theory of ODEs. You have a, an object here, a function, it can be a vector field, it can be a more complex object. Uh, and you choose uh, which is singular and you control some singularity like vanishing of derivatives and some open conditions like uh, non-vanishing of second derivative, of the determinant of the second derivative. And you use something like normal form of this. So this is like a writing, choosing a coordinate system in which you can understand, you can write, write your function f in an understandable way, like here, sum of squares. And then looking at this, you can understand the behavior of the function by this, uh, uh, by this, uh, by this simple formula, which is like in singularity theory called normal form. Uh, this is a very general concept in this part, uh, this part of mathematics, like having singularity, writing something in the simplest uh, understandable way, and then study this, this object via this way. Okay. So we have a Morse function and we choose uh, now, I will use a substitution, which I already used uh, during classes. So this, if you attended last classes, this should be a bit more familiar to you. Xk plus one square plus Xn square. Okay. So these are like, a square and B square are just uh, like numbers. Uh, I don't define A and B, I just write what is A square and what is B square because I won't, won't be using A and B. And now here is the for epsilon and the delta greater than zero, choose, mm, what is the good name u which will depend on uh with depend on epsilon delta and on the index but we just uh, ignore the dependence for shortness of shortness of uh, uh of notation so you have u uh defined as a square plus B square less or equal than delta and minus A square plus B square belonging to minus epsilon epsilon. Okay, so let me draw a picture. which I already drew during classes, but I'm not sure if everybody attends classes. Uh, uh, so let me just draw it. We have A square plus B square, maybe not red, maybe olive. This is, this is this part. And here is the other part. Okay, so the place where the function is the smallest. So this is like a picture which you should uh, see and then forget because it is slightly misleading. It's uh, drawn on purpose. It should better be 
uh, drawn as as in here, like completing it to a rectangle. Uh, but uh, this is like a picture that we, we had on during classes, so I repeat it. Uh, so for here, uh, as, this part is uh, this part is uh, f is equal to f of p minus epsilon, and this part is f of p plus epsilon. Okay. Uh, so a small remark, this is quite an unfortunate notation because the set is closed and you suggest that it's open. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Thank you. We call it Z. Z doesn't suggest anything. Mm. Okay, so this is the picture that we had during during classes, uh, and I let me draw another picture here. And now the, the other picture is uh, mm, f of x y is equal x square minus y square. And now it's without squares. It's a bit. Uh, it's a bit better uh, because it's symmetric. Uh, we have here, and we have uh, mm, what is x square minus y square. Here is f of x, y uh, minus uh, so this is like a simple picture of the region. And this is a picture we should we should understand. So We have also a vector field Xi, which is like a gradient. And the vector field Xi is uh, 2x minus 2i. So let me draw the vector Xi also here. Uh, wrong. Very Excuse me, this uh, hyperbola shouldn't be rotated of uh, 45 degrees. As this function is written, I think this this picture should be rotated. Oh crap, yes. Now I have to draw it. Sorry, but it, it's important I have to spend a while for, for this. Thank you very much for this remark. It's I started drawing the uh, the function and I got some nonsense and uh, the vector field and I got some nonsense. But now it's now I know why where the where the mistake was committed. Okay, here and now the part which is. Like here, and here is the other part. And so this is uh, f of x square y, f of, sorry, f of x, y is equal minus epsilon, f of x, y is equal 
minus epsilon and here is f of xy equals epsilon f of xy equals epsilon uh, my, uh, equals epsilon so how does the um, what is the what is our region our region is uh, um, Mm, our region is now this part uh, and how does the vector field go well the vector field contracts along the y-axis so it goes in here and it goes over this axis. And here is the critical point. Okay, so we have like the exit set. Uh, and uh, I should also write, uh, I should also write something Mm. Uh, one more thing, I should also write, uh, but now I forgot what is the correct way. So this point is, uh, mm, sorry, it's um, mm, x square equals mm, one half delta minus epsilon, y square is one half delta plus epsilon. And uh, so I want to have the set to intersect it with, uh, to introduce one more, two more curves. I'm sorry about this uh, introduction, but this is, uh, this is because the, the, of, the, of the mistake I committed, uh, define x, square y square less or equal than one fourth delta square minus epsilon square so delta must be strictly greater than the epsilon so this is and now this is the the part that i wanted to have And here we should add this part also. Sorry. Um, A square, B square. I will tell you what is this uh, about. But I don't, I won't draw it in here. So what is, uh, what is the meaning? Uh, especially of this purple part. The purple part, the boundary of the of the of the of the z region is this, that, this, that, this. If I have a vector field like that, this one, I can easily solve the differential equation. Okay, so the flow is x of t is. Uh, x0 e2 uh, plus 2t, y of t is y0 e2 minus 2t. Is it right? So xy of t is equal x0 y0. In particular, the vector field is tangent to this space. Okay? Does everybody agree? The vector field is tangent to this space, and in general, in multidimensional case, when you use the flow, you multiply this guy by the exponent with positive with uh, e by e to minus two t. This is multiplied by e to e to two t. So this and that are multiplied by uh, the um, um, by the by the same function but one, one is in, multiplied by one function and the other is multiplied by its inverse 
uh, using a more fancy tool, mm, the function I what a p square is the first integral of the vector field gradient f. So this is what uh, uh, mm, coding. And now, what is the? We have entry set, which is the set through which the vector, the vector, the flow of the vector field enters. We have the exit set, through which the vector field goes out. And we have a tangent part, which is called, which we can call a vertical boundary. And this vertical boundary is. Uh, the uh, mm, is a part through which is a part of the boundary of this of this guy at which the vector field is tangent. So we understand the flow of the vector field through uh, uh, near the critical point. And let me just come back to this picture. You see this guy is the entry set. This guy will be the exit set, and the well we have the level sets. We have the level sets. The boundaries, the endpoints here, which is four points in each place, are the uh, are the um, are the exits. So we have like these four points here, and we see these four points somewhere in here. Okay, because the so how can we draw this picture in a different manner? I will try to use the same, or maybe I will use the same color. Sorry for if you think that I'm spending too much time on this. Uh, I'm sorry about this, but this is like um, mm, an important piece. So let me just shrink this picture and I will draw it in a slightly different way. So we have a level set here. And uh, uh, what is what was the color? The color was a leaf, okay? So we And now we have uh, oh, and here we should be the orange. Okay, and the mm, mm -hmm. so this is like the uh, like the picture for uh, for a Morse function that goes in here. We have a start. We have level set minus epsilon. We have a level set plus epsilon. On this level set, we have this part. On that level set. Uh, we have this, and now the question of drawing the the red part. The red part is harder to the interior is harder to to draw because for the interior we should have like going here and then having this singular level singular level set, and then we going. Here, so this is the the red region is the red region is harder to draw. Maybe you can draw it by yourself. Okay, so let me just fix recall the notation. This space this set was called Z. All right. So 
Suppose we have a general situation, a more general situation. We will, I will come back to these levels at Z in a moment, but let's see what happens when I have a flow. Uh, could you please repeat what's the relationship between those two pictures? Because I don't okay. really so this see is what so this part is a picture on this is an abstract picture for a function f of x square y square uh, sorry f of x y is equal to and this picture is if you have a function like if you consider a graph of this function in three, for in three dimensions okay so the graph of this function so this is like a function drawn on, this is a two variable function. So you draw a level set on it on a plane, but you can draw a graph of this function. And the graph of this function is essentially something like here. Okay, so the coordinates are, well, I should, I should twist it. So I should, I should make a twist because it's, uh, it should be the other way. But essentially this is the graph of the, the function f. Does it answer your question? Uh, probably I'll need to try to try drawing it myself to convince myself, but let's go forward. Okay, sure. So what happens if we have like here a level set F inverse of A, and we have F inverse of B for a general Morse function. So now I draw, I suppose like, B and A now are close to each other. Like one, like B is uh, not far away from A, okay? So that the critical point is here, so that, uh, so that I can draw the level set Z already at level at F inverse of A and F inverse of B. So here is my set Z. Okay, I can find all. I can always find this a uh, set like this. So what is? What does the flow do? Well, there are two options. Either I start in this this region, then I flow, flow up. I cannot enter if I start outside of Z. I cannot enter Z. Do you, do you agree with this? Because the vector field Xi is tangent to this boundary. This is this purple boundary. The vector field Xi is tangent to this boundary. So if I start outside, I stay in, outside. If I start, start inside, I stay inside. That was the purpose of introducing this, this guy and saying it's a first integral. Do you agree with this? This is an important step. Uh, provided that we stay inside of one chart, yes. Well, if I start, if I stay here, I cannot enter because if I go, if I enter, my vector field, it doesn't depend on the chart. My vector field Xi is tangent to this vertical boundary. So to this boundary. Yeah, but we use the charts to define the... But, uh, once, but tangency is independent on Tangency is independent on the chart. If something is tangent in one chart, it's tangent in the other chart. There's no, You're right. the, it, it doesn't depend on, doesn't depend on the chart. Just tangent means tangent. And, and so you start outside, you end up outside. So what does it tell you? The flow Xi induces an isomorphism and by saying isomorphism, I'm saying homotopy equivalence, whatever, between F inverse of A minus Z and F inverse of B minus Z. Is it okay? This is the same statement. This is the statement about nothing happens. This is precisely nothing happens lemma. And isomorphism, I'm saying, 
uh, by isomorphism, I mean uh, diffeomorphism, homotopy equivalence, uh, whatever. Okay, if you start in here, you don't enter this, you are sheltered by the walls of Z, like vertical walls, you cannot enter Z, so you have to reach F inverse of B. Is it, is it right? Because outside of the vector field, we assume that there is a one, the precisely one critical point. So the norm of the gradient is bounded above, is bounded from below outside of Z. So if you start here, the norm of the gradient is positive. So in finite time, you reach F inverse of B, unless you hit the critical point, but you can't hit the critical point because the critical point is in the interior of the region Z. Is, is it okay? Okay, but uh, it's that uh, it can happen that we, we start outside and we slide on the boundary. No, we can't. We can slide uh, on the well, boundary and keep keep being on the boundary. Yes. Or, or we cannot. Well, if we if we are on the boundary, we start on the boundary, we end up on the boundary. Because it's we, obvious. Yes. But if we start outside of the boundary, we end up outside of the boundary because we cannot. Well, that's the uniqueness of solutions. OK, OK. But because it, it's obvious that we cannot from boundary go go uh, enter. Uh, Yes. The inter interior, but but I, I was wondering about sliding on the boundary. Uh, no, uh, it's uh, okay. So this is already a part, a, an important part, and now this. What is what is z intersected with f inverse of a, and what is z intersected with f inverse of b? Well, this was discussed during classes, so let me remember. Z intersected with f inverse of a. Mm, this is uh, there is a nasty variable overload. because we remember that. So let me maybe, uh, sorry, let me call this, these guys beta and alpha because, and here beta, alpha and beta. F recall was minus uh, a square plus b square. So it was k square, p square was mm, uh, a x k plus one square plus x to n square. And we had conditions a square uh, plus b squared less or equal than delta, a squared b squared less or equal than the one for delta squared minus epsilon squared, and mm, b squared minus a squared belongs to minus epsilon epsilon. So for z intersected with f inverse of alpha, we have uh, b squared uh, we had essentially uh, mm, b square plus epsilon. Uh, here should be without squares. Uh, no, it should be squares, okay. And uh, a square plus b square less or equal than delta. So this we 
said that it is SK minus one multiplied by D to N minus K. That was during last classes. And Z intersected with F inverse of beta is P square equals A square plus epsilon, A square plus B square less than delta. And this we did, it is DK cross S and minus K minus one. And it's actually not hard to see that uh, the vertical boundary is is this guy. So this is sort of a uh, uh, sort of uh, an immediate observation. If you if you not feel well with this, this is a place where you should stop and and understand. This is like the most one of the most important parts of the whole more theory, that's why I'm trying to be mm, mm, maybe slower than, than usual. Uh, so here on that picture, you see the bottom boundary, we have K equal one, N equal two, so S, we should have S zero cross D D1 and D1 cross S0. So the entry set is S0 cross D1. This is this. S0 is two points, D1 is a segment. So this is the exit set is D1 cross S0. The boundary of the entry set and the boundary of the exit set are the same. But they are the same, and the pro and the flow gives the vertical boundary. So this and that is the same, and this is S zero cross S zero cross the interval, and you see it's like four points, four distinct segments. And in this way, we have proved the first important result the manifold F inverse of beta arises from F inverse of alpha by removing what do we remove? We remove In here, we remove this piece. So this is what we remove, we remove the entry set. By removing SK minus one cross TN minus K and gluing in DK cross S minus K minus one. This procedure is called this is like surgery, surgery on F inverse of alpha. Okay, who has uh, seen, uh, has anybody heard of the word surgery in the topological context? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Three people heard. Okay. I haven't. Okay. So this is like an important, uh, important, important step. So first of all, what what do we get for one in one dimension? Like. n equal to 2. 
So the level sets are one dimensional. Well, we can have zero surgery. What is zero surgery? We remove. So zero, zero surgery, and it's called K surgery. So zero surgery is a sur surgery with K equals zero. One surgery is a surgery with K equal one, and two surgeries surgery with K equal two, and so on and so on. So what is zero surgery? Zero surgery removes SK minus one, and so that is a sphere of dimension minus one, which by a convention that uh, everlasting con convention is uh, an empty set. And this agrees with, it's not merely a convention because the stable, mm, mm, because the, the set, the entry set, if you draw this picture for like case x squared plus or y squared, the entry set is, is empty. There's no entry because the flow goes out of the critical point. So a one dimensional manifold like this goes to another component because we remove nothing and we glue back something. And this something is, uh, this something is uh, just dk and k is zero. So it's a, a point cross s two minus one minus, uh, sorry, uh, two minus zero minus one is one. So this is s one. So this is d zero cross s one. Well, one surgery. Well, we have k equal one. So we remove s zero cross a segment. And we glue back glue in as zero cross segment in a different manner. This is one surgery. And two surgery. Well, what do we do? We remove a we remove S1 cross the zero, so we move a whole connected component and we glue in nothing, glue, glue back nothing. So this is goes to and the third component has been cancelled. You see the two surgery is the inverse operation of of zero surgery and zero surgery and one surgery is the, like somehow inverse operation of itself. And this is, uh, this is uh, somehow um, understandable because if you re reverse the sign of the function f, you reverse the index of critical point. So if you replace f by minus f, the index, the, the, it will be a Morse function as well, but now the you will get f alpha, uh, sorry, uh, you will get f alpha arising from f inverse of beta. So let me see it on a more, even more concrete picture. We have here a torus, a function, and we have here the level set below the, uh, we have empty set. Here is a critical point of index zero. It's a local minimum. So we should get a zero surgery. And indeed, the level set is a circle. Here, we have a critical point of index one. So it will be a one surgery. And of course, 
the one sur and the, the one surgery will give us two circles. And then we come to the third critical point here, which is also index one. So what do we get? We get one circle and we have critical point of index two. And this circle is discarded, is discarded. Empty set. Okay. And let me dwell on this critical point a bit more. This is a one one handle. This are this is a one surgery. But one surgery can we uh, the one surgery can be uh, is not here is it is uh, it we cannot immediately say what will it produce without extra data. So why why can't we do this? Well, I can add a handle. Sorry, sorry, I'm not not supposed to say handle yet, but I can perform a surgery on uh, on a zero D one embedded in this way, but I could also perform a surgery on D zero cross S one embedded in that way. This will lead us to this case, but this will lead us to three circles. Okay, so the whole surgery procedure depends, it's not the only thing it depends on, but it depends on um, the embedding of uh, the embedding of this guy in F inverse of alpha. We can sometimes we can embed in different ways, and if you embed in different ways, we get different uh, we get different uh, manifold as an outcome. So how can can we under, can we possibly understand the way we embed? So let me come back to this fantastic picture. Should use it as my profile picture on Facebook. I like it so much. And we return to the anatomy of the handle. Not everything has been drawn on this picture. Too many, there are many things that have been drawn, but not everything. And it's good. So we said this is. S K inverse cross D and minus K. This guy is D and D K cross S and minus K minus one. Okay. Or maybe I should. Uh, draw a different color for that. And of course, I said during the classes we have seen this, the n minus k, but we can see it once again. What is this? The stable manifold is x equals zero, the vertical. Axis. The unstable is y equals zero, the horizontal. What is the intersection of, let me call it ws and let's call it wu. And uh, just for shortening the notation, I will all this is mm, n minus, and for this, I will use the notation n plus. Okay, so uh, n minus is the uh, 
And so, so this is the entry set, and this is the exit set. This, this is n minus, and this is n plus. So, n minus intersected with n minus is the entry set. So n minus is the set through which the flow enters the region Z. So for example, in particular, n minus has to be disjoint from the unstable manifold, but it can be, it, it intersect the stable manifold. What is this? This is the space y equals zero, or in general, Mm. If we use the this, uh, this is stable, yes. So it is x k plus one is equal x n equals zero. So this is like the two dimensional picture, and this is like the multi dimensional picture. Uh, y equals zero, and so x square is equal to. Uh, x equals zero and uh, y squared is equal to epsilon so this is s zero and x one square plus x k square is equal to epsilon so this is s k minus one and Likewise, we can say n plus intersected with w u is equal to y equals zero x square is epsilon. This is the two-dimensional picture. I draw both two-dimensional, and if you understand the two-dimensional picture, we understand also the multi-dimensional. And x one is equal x n equal xk equals zero, xk plus one square plus x n square is epsilon. So this is s n minus k minus one. So um, this is one of the intersections. This is the other intersection. Okay. This is SK minus one, and you remember that N minus was this part. So this is there is an identification of N minus with DK N minus one, such that this is identified with SK minus one cross zero. And again, this is zero cross. S and minus k minus one. So the sphere the sphere that we have uh, uh, mm, uh, this sphere is like a center or the core of n minus, and 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 this exit sphere is the core of n plus. So when we have a, when we want to understand how this whether this the picture is in here and it's here, we look at the topology of the embed or the embedding of the sphere uh, into mm, mm, of the sphere that is the intersect the level set of the stable manifold where this this is like a thickening of the stable manifold intersected with the level set okay and that we, what we can discuss I will come back to that that moment in a in a while because I have to introduce some more terminology. Let me just 
pause the recording and we come back to this to this part because we have we said well that f inverse of beta arises from f inverse of alpha by removing this part and gluing in that part but then the question is what happens with f inverse of minus infinity beta versus f inverse of minus infinity alpha. Maybe I shouldn't write it here. Uh, what happens with that part? Okay, so I will give a, wave, a hand waving argument and I will leave it as an exercise to you to prove it or to understand the proof from Milner's book, Lectures on H. Coburn's theorem. And an analogous uh, result is proved uh, for, like, a, in a bit, bit more general setting in the, my paper with uh, uh, Nemetin Dranitsky. Um, because the concept is easy and technicalities are a bit more complex. The concept is that I take a point on f inverse of beta, which is outside of uh, outside of z. I flow it back to f inverse of alpha. So I can, like say, squeeze everything So here I'm doing several pictures and I will try to And here we are, of course, we have these parts that are below. So this picture, let me just erase what should be erased. And this maybe should be corrected. So this picture should convince you that f inverse of beta is equal to f inverse, uh, sorry. Minus infinity beta is equal to f inverse of minus infinity alpha union z. So I claim this. And I will give you a hand waving argument for that, and uh, because the because it it can be done exp explicitly. Uh, somehow, uh, mm, mm, somehow it's uh, once you've seen the argument, it's uh, 
it's pre it's better to write it down by yourself than the, the proof by yourself than uh, understanding another another people's proof. So we start with f inverse of b, and we start to push down everything except for a neighborhood of z away uh, back to f inverse of alpha. As in the proof of nothing happens, then nothing happens. But then we have to keep track of be careful that so that we don't push z because we can and we don't push a neighborhood of z so this is like a picture of an intermediate step and once we pushed everything back down everything but uh, except for a neighborhood of z we are in this situation and now we want to push this part this neighborhood of z so to be a bit more uh, uh, a bit more, uh, let's say, uh, precise, we could define another z with different epsilon deltas, with different, with bigger epsilon, with, sorry, with bigger delta, so bigger ball. So remember there was this definition of like small ball, but we can make bigger ball. So we could make another z with the same definition but with different z and now we can squeeze it vertically this part precisely on that that guy and by what i'm saying squeeze me may i mean it's a homotopy uh, homotopy retract but also we can if with a little more extra care you can get a different morphism okay so the idea is that we squeeze using First, using vector field down. So here is like squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And it's pushing on F inverse of alpha. But there is a neighborhood which we cannot squeeze because if we don't move this point, we shouldn't move this a, a, near, uh, a nearby point. We shouldn't move it by too much. So we just go and so we get a vertical. Mm, uh, vertical statement. Is it okay if I leave it like this and uh, stay for you uh, and uh, give for you um, um, uh, uh, enough? Uh, is it is it is it okay if I leave it like this, or you want more details? I didn't understand the hand waving of the, between the third and the fourth uh, picture. Okay. So the hand waving is like this. We have uh, Was delta prime greater than uh, greater than delta? Okay. So delta prime. So this d prime is is somewhere in here. Okay. So now what we do? We Uh, where should I write it? Maybe, maybe this is again a good moment to. It's not a purpose. Okay, sorry. Uh, so everything away from z prime is uh, pushed to the level set alpha. A point in the sphere of radius delta plus delta prime minus delta is pushed. So this is like this vertical pushing, and then the elements in the level set are moved to the same level set but smaller circle. So you you have to like adjust a and b in such a way that you keep the level set so you contract everything vertically just make the smaller circle uh, i don't want to give a formula it's like a, a linear algebra formula so now comes the 
let me ju just leave it. If you if you need, you can check up the details in the literature that I gave. And here is the main definition. The main definition. The set Z, well, it was defined as a set of A square plus B square less or equal than delta, B square minus A square less or equal than epsilon, and A square times B square is equal to one four of uh, delta square minus epsilon square is called a n-dimensional handle of index k. So this is like a, an abuse, a slight abuse of notation. So saying that it's, saying that it's a def definition is uh, mm, is an abuse of notation because Z is just D to N. So we define handle of index K, but uh, it's not a mathematical definition in the sense of uh, like uh, a rig. It's a, we call it a handle, it's like a terminology for humans. So it's a handle and we emphasize on N minus equal S K minus one times T N and N plus equal T n minus k cross s. Uh, sorry, n plus equal uh, d k cross s n minus k minus one, or if the dimension is understood. A K handle. The procedure of like M going to M union and minus C is called a handle. Attachment. So this is like a passage uh, when we when I say when someone sell, tells me we have a handle, I think of a handle as a as an n-dimensional disk by presented as d k cross d n minus k, and this presentation. Well, it's not unique. That's why I'm saying that it's an index of K gives me a decomposition of a boundary of Z. It's the way I look at the boundary of Z. The boundary of Z is N minus union S K, K minus one and plus. And there is a, one more terminology. Uh, handle the composition of a manifold M is a presentation of M as a union of handles. So we can write M as a union of handles. And now there is an example. Can I just check in the in the definition? Yeah. Was it A squared, B squared, less than or equal to um, a half delta squared minus epsilon squared? Yeah. Is this when you wrote down the set Z? Yes, that's what I wrote, yes. It's one fourth of delta square minus epsilon square. It's just you wrote, wrote equals in the... Oh, it should be uh, less or equal, yeah, sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so here is the, um, here is an example. 
we have a, a torus, and now we present the torus. We have critical point of index 0, 1, 1, 2. So, below this level set, we have a zero handle. These are two dimensional handles, so I'm saying zero handle. And the zero handle is just a disk which is attached to nothing. But it's now I look at this part. So what happens? This is a disk as it used to be, but now we specify a part of this. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, more like you would write this part but whether you draw it this way or that way is like homotopy equivalent statement okay this is like a, and this is a one handle a one handle is a disk which is here S1 cross S0 cross D1. And here is D1 cross S0. But the abstract statement of the one handle is exactly the same as here. So this is like this picture, if you squeeze in the purple part, you will get this picture. So this guy is just a, a squeezing of this, uh, of this vertical boundary. So for, from, from the geometer or for differential geometer, you don't squeeze because you, are, you want everything to control everything smooth, but for algebraic topologies or geometric topologies, you squeeze because you are interested most, more in, a, a more in mm, topology and not the geometry. So this is a one handle. And at this level set, what happens is that you attach one more one handle. So the picture is uh, this. So this is another one handle. And now you that, that that this is this is your level set. And now when you cross this point, you attach a two handle, which is a cap, and you get the full torus. So far, so good. So this uh, this is like the beginning of more theory. So this means uh, a lot of definitions which are very simple, but it, they give you a deep understanding. For example, every, every smooth manifold, smooth closed or closed manifold, admits a Morse function. That is a problem that still is uh, um, hanging over us uh, in, during classes. Every manifold, the, the Morse functions are open and dense in particular, every smooth manifold admits a Morse function. And every Morse function gives you a handle decomposition. So from this, you get a statement. Every Morse, every smooth manifold admits a handle decomposition. This is a, so every, for every smooth manifold can be built up from simple pieces from disks that are glued together in a, in a specific way. So you can understand the manifolds via looking the way these disks are glued. If you know what a CW complex is, this is a bit more, a lot like a CW complex, but it's much better for studying manifolds. And let me give you an example, which is, uh, 
which I will not prove today, but I will prove it in general at some moment. And actually, I expect more like you to prove. Let LPQ be a land space. that is a quotient of S3 by the action of ZP, ZW goes to Xi Z Psi to QW. This is like the most stupid definition of the of the land space. Uh, the the most the one that I don't like the most, but it's like the most accessible for um, uh, for uh, for you. And Xi is the uh, piece root of unity. Then one. Well, F admits a Morse function with. And just to make sure, this is the action of the generator of ZP, right? Yeah, it's the action of the generator of ZP, yes. So, but we understand with one index zero critical point. One index one critical point, one index two critical point, and one index three critical point. Okay, every regardless of p and q, you can find the Morse function on it. So that's like a standard task. Uh, if you want, you can just try to find a function on. S3 that is invariant under this action and then see what are the critical points. There are other ways of looking at it. But see, what is pi 1 of LPQ with this definition? Can anybody just say on the spot what is pi 1? I give you this definition, and can you parse this definition to say what the, what pi one is? I it will be z, z, z p, I think. Yeah, it is z p. Why is z p? It's because uh, the it's a quotient of the action, so s three is a cover of L P Q. S three is simply connected, so it's a universal cover, and the action. And ZP is a vector transform action, so ZP is the fundamental group of LPQ. So you see, you have a manifold, you have a bunch of manifolds, like actually an infinite family, and all these family, all these manifolds have the same handle decomposition with one zero handle, one one handle, one two handle, one three handle, and they are very far from being diffeomorphic or homotopic in general. They are not homotopy equivalent. So we got a handle decomposition. But uh, more theory will actually provide us with some tools that give us uh, more better understanding of what the how to decompose it, and then we will try to understand uh, also the how to find the simplest possible handle decomposition of a manifold. Okay, so for that I.